In just a couple days, Disney Plus is going to hit us with what I am hoping to be an absolutely epic fantasy adventure in the Willow television series. And truth be told, being somebody that didn't watch the original movie back in the day, I wanted to jump on, check it out myself, and let you guys know whether or not it's worth seeing. So if you're not super familiar with Willow, or if maybe like me, you just didn't grow up watching it, let me tell you what I think about it. So first off, if you're wondering what the heck is Willow, I'm going to hit you with a couple of names, okay? First off, the story is written by none other than George Lucas. The movie is directed by the legendary Ron Howard, and it stars not only Warwick Davis, who at the time maybe wasn't so big, but has gone on to be in a ton of things, but it also stars Val Kilmer. And not just any Val Kilmer, we're talking late 80s Val Kilmer, which was him at his peak. So this movie came out in 1988, which would have been shortly after George Lucas had done his original Star Wars trilogy, so he was pretty much at the height of his powers at this time, and he had an idea of doing a somewhat simple fantasy adventure film. It's actually kind of sweet how this movie came together. You see, Warwick Davis was, I think, around 11 or 12 or something like that when he wrote to George Lucas or met George Lucas and told him he was a giant fan of Star Wars. Now, this was before the third Star Wars movie had come out, and George Lucas then went and cast Warwick Davis as an Ewok in The Return of the Jedi. So here you have this 12, 13 year old kid who is getting to absolutely live out a fantasy of his own. And then not only that, but during the filming of Return of the Jedi, George Lucas tells Warwick Davis basically, I think you're amazing and I want you to be the star of a movie that I'm working on now. So essentially George Lucas created this film for Warwick Davis, which is absolutely insane. So at the age of maybe 17 or 18, Warwick Davis would go on to play the lead character Willow, although he didn't get top billing with the movie, which I guess makes sense when you have a star like Val Kilmer, but make no mistake, he is absolutely the primary focus of the whole movie. So let me tell you a little bit about what the story is about. It is pretty simple. Essentially, you have this evil witch who is also the queen of this kingdom, and there's a prophecy that says that there is going to be a child born that leads to her death basically. And so as an evil witch might do, she then proceeds to go and perform a ritual on all the newborn children so that they can't grow up to fulfill this prophecy. I don't know if she kills them. It's not necessarily clear, but she's basically keeping it to where they can't grow up to have her killed. And at the beginning of the movie, there's a baby born who the mother then kind of spirits away and she ends up basically in a river a la Moses and drifts down the river and ends up at Willow's little village. There, Willow's kids end up finding the baby and Willow is whisked up into this whole adventure where he has to try to take the baby to safety and to find this other good witch who is gonna help them kind of combat this evil witch slash queen character. So more or less a simple story and the way it kind of plays out is really what you would expect. But here's the thing about Willow. Something to keep in mind is, of course, this is a kid's movie. So this isn't gonna be something that I would expect too much from as far as that's concerned, as far as the complexity of the story, it is gonna be pretty simple. And also, this came out in 1988. And when you go back to the 80s and think about the fantasy adventure films that we had at that time, we did not have the Lord of the Rings series or Game of Thrones or any of these crazy fantasy adventures with all these incredible special effects. It was very limited at the time. And honestly, despite the limitations in special effects, they really go above and beyond in this movie with what they attempt to do. Now, of course, looking back on it, from present day, you can see how kind of janky some of the special effects are, but at the time, it was pretty groundbreaking. They had some full-on CG elements that had not been done before, and that would then become really popular in film, especially in the late 80s, early 90s. For example, there's one scene where a character is transforming into other creatures, and that same effect would go on to be used in a bunch of movies, including, I believe, Abyss, and uh, Terminator. So this was really kind of something that kicked off what a lot of movies would imitate going forward, which is kind of what George Lucas does. You know, say what you will about George Lucas and his storytelling, it cannot be denied that he has pioneered so much in as much as how filmmaking is done, especially with special effects and things like that. And yeah, maybe this movie was a little bit ahead of its time. Also, it's kind of cool to go back and watch this and see some scenes that would be imitated in films down the road. For example, there is a battle between the two witches and there's a particular move that's done in this battle that I remember very specifically from seeing in The Lord of the Rings when Gandalf fights Saruman. Now, I don't know if that particular move that they do, and I don't wanna spoil anything, but that particular move, I don't know if that was in the book 
from Lord of the Rings. I never really read those books, but there is something very specific that they do that you will absolutely recognize. So despite the fact that it's definitely a bit dated and the writing is most certainly aimed at young kids, I think this movie is a ton of fun. Every single person in it is just really fun to watch. Warwick Davis is totally lovable. He gives you kind of these Frodo vibes, of course, before Frodo would be on film. And also Val Kilmer's character, Mad Mardigan, is fantastic in this. He plays this kind of swashbuckling swordsman slash ladies man, and it really feels like Val Kilmer just dove headfirst into that role and kind of really sunk his teeth into it. It also does a pretty good job of creating this world and transporting you to it in a manner that makes you want to see more about it, which is why I'm really excited about this upcoming series. Really, it feels like the original film is just kind of a taste test of what could have been done had this been allowed to or had it been stretched out to more sequels. So I don't want to give you the wrong idea. I don't want you to go into this thinking it's going to be some absolutely incredible, special effects heavy, wild ride of a movie. It really is pretty simple and it really is a product of its time. But if you can open your mind and open your heart to it and kind of transport yourself back into being a little kid, I really think this is something you could enjoy. And it's funny now watching the trailer for the upcoming series, it is pretty different from the original movie. So I'm curious to see what kind of route they go with that. I did actually do a trailer reaction to the first trailer for the new series, so I'll link you to that in the corner here at the end of the video. And of course, I'm definitely gonna be doing a review of the series after I watch it in the next couple days. So if you're gonna check it out or if you wanna hear my thoughts on it, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, definitely let me know your thoughts. Have you seen the original Willow movie? Did you watch it when you were a kid or have you only recently watched it? And also, let me know, obviously, what you think about it. I'd love to hear that as well. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. All right, be good.